Hi everyone, welcome back, and I have my buddy here. Um, so, the list was great. I thank all of you that replied. That was so exciting for me to hear from you. And at any time, feel free to chime in and let me know what you're interested in if we're not covering it, um, if we're not hitting your, your need. So, that's, that's what, so that's number one. Number two, my kitchen online course is on my site. I'm going to post the link probably in the next day or two in this group. And it's chock full for the price. I had it on, but Facebook took it off because I had the price on it. So I'll just give you the link for the introductory price. If you know anyone or you that are upgrading or remodeling or new build, I wouldn't do any of that without being really packed full of just of the knowledge one needs to tackle a kitchen. So <clears throat> of all those topics, the top two were downsizing and aging in place. We're calling it aging gracefully in place. So this, for those of you that started with me in the beginning, um, we did 10 reasons to downsize now. And because we know that it takes 11 times to learn something and it takes 18 times to relearn something, repetition is our friend. So we're gonna go over these reasons and I need them because I'm really needing to dig into areas. Isn't it something how things just keep accumulating and messes and stuff? So, ugh. I'm, I'm not like, who would I say? Um, anyway, I'm not the guru. I know how, what to do. I haven't done it all yet, but I'm fixing to. So, top 10 reasons why we downsize now. Number one is life will change. Be ready. Uh, when my husband, when Bob and I did our aging in place, uh, home forever, last best nest. We had no idea what was in our future for his health wise. He's doing fine. Um, you can read it in my book in detail, but um, who knew? Obviously, we were there. That was where we were going to stay. But life happens, you all. You'll never regret being ready. If things don't change for you, you're a winner. If they do change, you're a winner. Number two, your, your children will kiss your feet after you've gone. I know Robin and some others commented on having to take care of their parents' stuff. Oh, if they haven't done anything, I'm telling you guys, they're not going to love you for not... They're going to be frustrated even after you're gone that we, you, and I did not deal with all this. Bob and I have stuff that we've still got to get, you know, get into and go, what would our kids think? Why are we keeping this? Number three, your downsizing is like a body cleanse, seriously. It is so, ah, oh, to have order. Order, you cannot have a stress. This is like not Mitzi. This is like what is the gurus tell us on mental health and emotional well-being. We cannot have um, calm, peaceful, orderly mindset and life when there's chaos and there's clutter everywhere even if it's not everywhere, especially in your 80%. You know, 80% of the time, we're in 20% of our spaces. That 20% or that 80, that space that we are living most of the time should be the utmost in order and calm. Number four, do not avoid doing a complete downsizing by renting a storage unit, just hauling it from one place to another. This is cheating you all. I mean, it's just there for you. And um, I've 
done programs and stuff on this and given all kinds of information about why that will kind of come back and haunt you or your kids. It happened to me and Bob Bob. Number five, to live a more fulfilling, happier life, give your excess and unused things away to people that really need them. As Bob and I go through the seasons on uh, changing out clothes, that is our time when we're looking at coats and all these things that people need. And how many do we need? The ones we're using? Yes. The ones we haven't done for year or worn for years and years and years for that maybe? That's, that's not doing you or anybody else any good. You know what I mean. Number six is another. Accept the fact that your kids are not going to want the majority of your things. This is hard. Um, we, when we were moving, first of all, we had our family home of 30 years in Wichita. And the kids grew up there. We had a pool. We had the gamut of kids and activities and everything there. But the house didn't serve us well. And that's another topic we're going to do on downsizing homes. Is your, space, is your home working for you? But for today, this is about number six, about your kids. Uh, we had all of them come. They were all out of state because they don't remember what what you have. Like, oh yeah, maybe I think about that, you know, piece of furniture or whatnot or that lamp or whatnot. And then you give it all away and it's like, oh, I really wanted that. It reminds me of such and such. So we put it to them and we made it whatever was convenient. They didn't have to do like one time. It's better because if they all can be there because then they can face to face negotiate if there's any um, uh, double dipping, so to speak, on who may want, because we had some of that. And it just worked out. They did such a super job um, negotiating with each other. Number seven, to live a less stressful life, possess less. You know, at the 50 plusers, most, and of course, I'm not 50, um, but some of you are in your 50s. And the older you get, the more we want to experience life. We, um, okay, that's on another one. Uh, possess less. So my example for you, and I did a post on my closet, I'm gonna do another one, um, is I give the example that you go into your, for me, I go into my closet and it's like, no, 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 mm, maybe, yes. I mean, why put ourselves through that, you all, when we know for sure that the odds of us wearing that are very rare. So um, I just think it is very important to do the immediate for stress and then work, because for me, it makes a huge difference. I've got to do that now. It just, like I said, downsizing and sorting and life sizing, it's a never ending. But when we keep up on it, which I haven't, and it's a bigger job now because I haven't, um, it is really rewarding in our peaceful, how many times do we dress, right? So um, that's my example, but there's a lot of other places that stress, kitchens, I mean, oh, for real, not places not to have things because you have too many things. We're going to talk about our A space, B, C, B space, C space, and where things uh, should, let's see, where things work better functionally. Eight, acknowledge that every single thing you have takes up real estate space. I fell into this trap many times. I thought, well, and I have it right now in our lower level basement. 
I have, we have too much, too many books. I mean, we, anyway, that's our next big mountain to climb. But, uh, and we've done a lot. But like I said, we're not done yet. Um, behind closed doors, in closets that you don't use, like guest room closets. If those are still packed with clothes, if you have things stored all over your house, uh, it takes up real estate and you have to deal with it. If there's things out, you have to clean it or dust it or whatever it is. So um, things behind, everything you own takes up real estate, whether it's hidden or whether it's visible. Next to last is become a role model. Your friends and especially your family, they notice. And I know maybe you're thinking, oh, we have guys and they pay no attention. They, they do. I mean, they'll not admit it, but when they see your orderly kitchen preparing meals or whatnot, they get it. So, um, and your friends, we want to be, because we're aging gracefully, we want to be the role model of aging with excellence in all areas. And this is especially one to have a peaceful home. Like I said, I don't believe a peaceful home is possible with a lot of clutter and chaos and disorganization. And then the last, one of the most important is experience life, to experience life more. The less we have, the easier it is to manage life. We can do things faster. We don't have to get through all these things. And I'm not showing you my studio right now, my loft studio, because you would be like, well, Mitzi, you have no room to talk. And yes, that's true. But, you know, our three pillars, healthy um, mindset or attitude, healthy homes, and healthy lifestyle. Downsizing hits those two. The healthy mindset, because you don't do anything without thinking about it. So, let me tell you, this is high on my priority to get rid of some things. And I promise you I will do that and um, I'm going to show you, well I should do a quick video show you before and then and after. So, um, but it just, we, we don't want to be, a, most of us I should say are done with collecting and buying and purchasing more unless they're treasures from a trip or something like that. Of course we're going to continue to purchase things. But there's a difference between just accumulating stuff for stuff and, and not being in control of that tchotchke buying. Like every fair or every whatever, you're just picking up all this stuff. That's a trap, and you'll regret it later. So am I there yet? As I've said, no. Um, two years this July, we will be here. We've made great headway, but we've also been busy, and we've also had to get over the, I had to get over the emotional, I don't want to say trauma, but um, yeah, it, I, there were days I just couldn't do it. And so I'm healthier now, um, emotionally and mentally, to really just go, 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 go. It's out of here or it's given away. So that's it. And next time, um, I'm debating, but I'll let you know what I'm gonna be doing. Anyway, to wrap up, remember, we do more for ourselves, which includes downsizing, so that we can be more for others. See you next time.